I do. Christina Lorellis, 151 East Textile Road, and I pulled out my Save the Bits Real Preserve shirt for this evening's meeting. And I'm not sure if any of you are aware, there is on Thursday at the Planning Commission, this upcoming Thursday, January 17th at 6.30 p.m., there will be a public hearing. The public hearing is for a company called Wacker Chemical. I think they pronounce it Wacker, Wacker Chemical. And they want to build, I believe it's a 140,000 square foot building and it's a total of 59 feet tall, which is uh, almost six stories. The, the 59 feet has to do with ventilation stacks, which are sort of in the center of the building. Um, on the site plan, they go out of the way of showing the areas that the building will not be visible from because it's quite unattractive. I mean, that, I should say that for what it is, it's not an unattractive building. However, nobody wants to live next to 59 foot ventilation stacks. And the location where they wish to place this building is immediately adjacent to Marshview Meadows. Immediately adjacent to Marshview Meadows. It's on the northeast corner of the Avis Farms South Business Park, which is, it ends at the, the railroad tracks that are just before Marshview Meadows Park on Textile Road. And the reason that there's a public hearing is that there were limitations and restrictions placed on the Avis Farms South Business Park. This was also done through a court proceeding when a number when this when this development was first proposed in the late 1990s we did a referendum on the rezoning the original rezoning we gathered signatures in order to put it on the ballot the developer proactively sued the township over the referendum in an attempt to halt the referendum because we had been successful with referendums in the past referenda in the past and had an 82 percent no vote on the most recent one so they didn't want to do that. They wanted it forced through in court. We neighbors had watched the township fail to represent the citizens of the township at the previous rezoning, where we were successful in our 82% no vote. We watched the township simply give it to the developer after that. So we moved to intervene in court. This was in 1999. We intervened successfully. Once we had intervened, the developer immediately moved to settle, knowing that we might well succeed, hold the referendum, and deny the rezoning of the business park in total. What we ultimately agreed on was that we weren't opposed to the campus-style business park proposal. What we didn't want was a negative impact on the rural and agricultural area in the center of the, of the township, and that is now the Pittsfield Preserve. So there were quite a few limitations that were placed on the business park at that time. Those limitations are found in the actual governing document, which is the area plan for the planned unit development for Avis Farm South that's dated in 1999. The adoption of the what was then called an emergency ordinance in order to settle the lawsuit with the agreed upon road layout, which had only one entrance on Textile Road. And height restrictions, other restrictions, use restrictions, the, uh, that was, the adoption was adopted on uh, June 8th, 1999. And at that time there were a master deed and other documents that I've FOIAed in order to get the, the full scope of the limitations. So uh, what I'm hoping that the park commissioners will do is stand with the residents, join us at the public hearing on the uh, 17th next week, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. It's, there starts at 6.30 here at Township Hall. And we are opposed to changing the, they want to, the, the reason there's a public hearing is that in order to change a planned unit development and release some of these restrictions, which are for the benefit of the residents of the township, and in this instance, for the benefit of the Pittsfield Preserve, the reason that they have to go through a public hearing is because they're actually doing another rezoning on it to change the area plan that's the governing document for this particular planned unit development. So our position is, why would we want to change it and allow them to build a horrible building right next to the Pittsfield Preserve? The developer goes out of the way to note that it's not going to be visible from State Road and it's not going to be visible from further down on Textile Road as if that's what we're trying to prevent, protect our commercial corridor on State Road, if someone needs to be protected from this building. 
well, we need to stand up and say our parks need to be protected from this building. We don't even know what they need the 59-foot ventilation stacks for, but it is called Vacker Chemicals, so presumably there's chemicals involved. And so I hope that you'll uh, take the time to look at that when the, the Planning Commission packet will be posted on Friday, and you'll be able to see the site plan, you'll be able to see the consultants' reports as well at that time. I've only just seen the site plan because I FOIA'd it. And I hope that you'll take a look at those, uh, attend the meeting, and as you're independently elected of the board, you're not, you're not appointees other than um, uh, Commissioner Hunt. You're not appointees, you're elected by the people of the township in the same way that the board is. So you're not bound to follow some uh, program that the township administration has set up and may be pursuing. I don't know that they are, but it, this was has gone through METC and SPARC, and the Township Board has un undoubtedly had some activity with it. The supervisor is very active with SPARC and METC. So you're, you know, you're independently and separately elected. So I would hope that you will come, listen to what's being said, uh, fully review that. This will have tremendous impact on our park, and look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, so um, it has to do actually with what Christine brought up um, in the public comments. Um, she had alerted me to this and I did a little bit of research and I, I do feel that it is um, something that we, as the Park Commission, should keep on our radar um, because there's a few things um, that concerned me um, from an environmental standpoint. Um, so it's a 59 related to the new, the proposed building um, that they want to put in for the Becker chemical. Um, so it's a misnomer because they're saying it's two stories, um, but it's 59 feet um, and tall because of the vent stacks. Um, and the plan, like she said, assured that it wouldn't be seen from State Road, which is fine, um, but it is going to be directly on Textile Road. Um, and like she said, adjacent to, directly next to Marshview Meadows. Um, and a chemical company increasing their presence near wetlands and natural areas is concerning. concerning um, and we kind of see that with the Gelman um, dioxide plume that is happening on the west side of Ann Arbor. And I would hate for something like that to work into our um, water systems um, particularly because Marshview Meadows is a wetland area. Um, so that's, that's really concerning to me. Um, the dumpster and service yards will also be facing the park, um, which is, that's a problem, um, because parks, um, these trash near the parks are introduction of species that we don't want to see. Um, we don't want an increase of raccoons and rats and um, things like that. So that definitely is something that we need to keep on our radar. Um, as well as the increased traffic that we're going to see um, with the 300 new jobs that this uh, new building is supposed to bring. Um, means 300 cars entering on Textile Road, which Textile Road was supposed to be used as a bypass and now this would be directly used for um, this chemical company, and this increased disruption to the flora and fauna um, near the location throughout Textile Road um, is going to definitely affect the biodiversity and the health of our parks. Um, soil, waste, concrete, and toxins and runoff from the construction sites and the fuels um, accidentally spilled during storage or deliver delivery can um, enter you know, our water courses, and particularly the neighborhood um, are on septic and well water, so that's also an issue um, separate from the parks, but still something that, um, as a park commissioner, I feel is important. Um, the construction can also introduce invasive species, and as we have had this discussion, um, that's going to be an issue as well. And um, lights from the building can affect behavioral and biological rhythms of species, including birds. Um, and Marshview Meadows particularly has um, uh, blue heron nesting places, and so this can definitely be um, an issue for you know, the species that we currently have in 
our parks. Um, and so I do feel like this needs to stay on our radar. Um, and as Christine said, that there is a meeting on January 17th um, that I personally plan on attending um, to bring these concerns up because they are um, issues that I feel um, do affect the parks in our area. So that was the business of the tour. Thank you for the thorough Janet Naveau, 2350 East Town Road. He um, brought a couple of things to my mind. Um, thank you about the chemical company. I think that definitely needs to be looked at, and uh, you guys as the park commission, are, that should be a big priority for you guys, I think, just to make sure that our wetlands, our, our number five drain, goes right through Marshview Meadows. And so it not only impacts the local parks, but the state, I mean, it goes into the Great Lakes, mm. it drains into the Great Lakes. So we don't want chemicals. They, they do a lot of plastics at that company. I mm. looked into it, and they, they do a lot of plastic development. And um, yeah, we don't want those chemicals into our drains and then into our Great Lakes. That's the last thing we want to see happen. So um, thank you for looking into that.